What's up, Loop community? My name's Edge. I'm a Logic Pro certified trainer, and today we're going to show you how you can use markers uh, to navigate and arrange your tracks in Logic. Let's get after it. Okay, so here we've got a project. We've gone ahead and imported all of our files. Uh, we flex them so that they can uh, be flexible in terms of pitch and in terms of tempo. And so now what we need to do is that we need to start kind of arranging this file. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use markers. Now, markers are really important because markers are the way that we tell uh, other applications like MainStage what sections of each song that we want to play. Uh, it's also helpful to know where each section of your song is, so as you're laying it out in your arrangement, you have a visual set of cues as well as a set of audio cues for you to actually um, work with. So that's what we're going to do in this video. In Logic, I don't necessarily need flex time anymore, or I don't need to see flex time anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. And what I really want to do is I want to go ahead and start configuring my global tracks to enable markers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little uh, global tracks menu here at the top. Right now, all I have is my tempo track, but if I right click on it, I can go ahead and configure my global tracks. And the two global tracks that we want to work with are marker um, and arrangement. And we'll get into these in a little bit more detail. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable those. I'll go ahead and get out of this view. And um, to add a marker, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you can actually just hit the plus button and that'll go ahead and add a marker. Then we can go ahead and name it. So this will be the intro. Uh, and I know that um, the intro goes for about four bars. So I know that I've got uh, a marker here at one, and if I wanted to move forward, I can press the greater than or less than signs um, or the right and left brackets to move forward a bar. Um, or if I hold down shift and press those, I can move forward eight bars, which is pretty great. But I'm just going to go ahead and move to uh, the end of bar four because this will be the next marker that we, uh, that we get to, which will be the verse. So if I click on this, that'll go ahead and let me get another marker. And again, I can double click on it to uh, enter in my uh, new marker. So this is the verse. So that's the basics of markers. But markers, like pretty much every other command in Logic, has a set of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and if you're trying to get around in Logic and, and get a little bit faster, it's pretty helpful to learn what these keyboard shortcuts are. And Logic will tell you what uh, these keyboard shortcuts are. So I'm going to head over to where it says Logic Pro 10 in the toolbar. I'm going to go down where it says Key Commands. And you can see I've got some presets here, um, some for Spanish. Uh, there's a Pro Tool set of keyboard shortcuts. There's you know uh, US, so on and so forth. But what I really want to do is I want to click on Edit, because Edit is going to show me all of the keyboard shortcuts that I need to get access to. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and just type in Marker so I can figure out what the keyboard shortcuts are. And sure enough, when I type in Marker, um, I've got a little window here that says, hey, you can create a marker, and it's got that little option, and it looks like a single quote uh, button. So that'll basically create a marker. And so, great, that's a pretty helpful uh, keyboard shortcut. Now, if you don't have this assigned to option uh, single quote, then you could actually tell Logic what you want that keyboard shortcut to be. So whether it's learned by key label or key position, you can kind of click right over here to learn it, uh, and then type in the key command that you actually want. But for now, we're just going to use option single quote. So let me close that out. And uh, I'm actually just going to play through. And as we play through, I'm going to add markers. So I know that the intro is four bars long, uh, and the verse is probably eight bars long. But we'll just play through it and actually enter in all of our markers. Cool. One thing to note that when we are actually entering markers is that Logic is rounding to the nearest uh, bar, which is pretty helpful because you can listen through one time and enter in these markers, which is pretty great. While I was typing, uh, I typed too long uh, and then the chorus jumped in. So I stopped it really quickly and I'm just going to go ahead and enter in another marker and type in the chorus. And remember, the keyboard shortcut that I'm using is command uh, single quote, but you can also just as easily hit the plus button right here, and that'll also create a marker. And note that as I hover over where it says create marker, it's actually telling me what the keyboard shortcut is. So I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to 
keep uh, adding in these markers. Okay, so now that we've got our markers inside the arrangement, we can kind of use these as a visual guide for our track. One thing that we're missing right now is guides. And so if we wanted to add guides into our track, we can actually use our markers to help us figure out where those go. If you're working with a track that doesn't have guides, or if you're producing a track that doesn't have guides, you can actually add them in. In fact, you can download the Q pack from Loop Community to get all of the different guides inserted into your computer. So I've got that saved in my browser. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up the browser again. Uh, I'll go ahead and go to my bookmarks, and here I've got QPAC already installed on my computer. And we can go ahead and, uh, and, and start looking through all of the different uh, QPACs that we need. Now, before we do that, though, let me set this off to the side for a second. Because I'm, I've got one issue right now. When I start the track, it just starts right straight away. And what I actually need to do is give myself one bar of count in so that when we run this as a track, we have a count in uh, and, uh, and, and our band can start at the same time. So we're gonna need to give ourselves a little bit more space and there's a pretty easy way to do that. Now, Logic has a set of cursor tools that you can use. So when we're talking about cursor tools, we're talking about tools that the mouse uh, is able to use. So if I press the letter T on my keyboard, it's going to give me all the different tools that I have to work with. And, and right now what I want to do is I want to use the zoom tool because I'm going to want to zoom in to the first four bars of the track. So I'll click over all the things that I want to zoom over, which in this case are all of the tracks. And I'm just going to zoom in to those first four bars of the track. You can see that when I do that, everything zooms in a little bit, which is great. Uh, I'm going to reset my uh, tools uh, by pressing T again and then T again. And what I'm going to do is that you could just move these over to the right uh, if you want to uh, do that. And that'll give us enough space to uh, move over. Uh, there's another way to do this. Let me Command Z or undo this. And uh, if I move my playhead to uh, here, and if I right click on any of these regions, one of the options that I can do is move. And I can move it to the playhead position. And that'll move all of my tracks to where, exactly where I want them to go. Pretty helpful tool for getting around quickly. OK, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and, and set off uh, this track by giving myself a cue uh, and giving myself a count in. And to do that in Logic, again, we can use QPack to make that happen. So I'll go ahead and click on the browser. Um, I've already got my QPack laid out right here. It's in my bookmarks. Um, and so I'm going to want to find the intro cue. There it is. I'll just drag it into a new track. And you can see we've now begun to do intro. And then I can count in. So uh, if you don't want to look through these, you can say one. There's my one. Actually, I'm just going to go from two. I don't really need to count uh, from one because I'm already saying intro. So there's two. Uh, I'll drag it to a new track. And then I'll grab three. Drag that there. And then four, and I'll drag that there. Great, so now when we start, here's where our song's gonna uh, start. Intro, two, three, four. Cool, let's do something real quick. If I wanted to add a verse then, because uh, verse is coming up next, I'll say verse, and I'll just drag that just before uh, the verse actually happens. I usually like to get the verse happening uh, right on the last beat of the bar leading up to the verse. So now if we take it from bar four. Verse. Cool. And uh, maybe if you want to actually get it on the last bar, I can say right when it hits bar four, it'll go ahead and play the verse. Verse. And you can tell that when I actually moved my, uh, when I moved uh, all of my tracks, I am going to need to move all of my markers too. So let me close the browser really quickly. It's very easy to close, uh, to move your markers. I'm just going to click on the marker track over here so that they're all selected. And I'm just going to move everything over one. Uh, and so now if I want to kind of extend the intro to start at the very beginning, I can drag that here, which means that now I need to move my verse. So I'll go ahead and move it just a bar over. Great. And so now I've added my clicks, I've added my cues, and I've added my track. 
and uh, if we start, uh, then it should play as intended. Intro. Two, three, four. Verse. Cool. So that's adding cues using QPack if you don't already have cues. Okay. So great. Now that we've got cues laid out along with our track, I'm going to hold off on adding all the other cues right now because what I actually want to do is I want to set up uh, maybe a bit of a longer interlude. Right now, that's a four bar interlude. And what I'm actually going to want to do is I'm going to want to create an arrangement um, that includes a much longer dance break uh, in the next service that we play this song. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually duplicate this. Now, you can create custom arrangements in Logic. And in fact, if we click on uh, the marker tab, and uh, if you don't have the arrangement tab already open, that's okay. Because what you can do is that you can click on this and you can actually convert these markers to arrangement markers. And what that's gonna do is that it's basically gonna take a look at all the markers that you have and it's gonna allow you to start creating custom remixes, custom arrangements of the song. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Okay. So now that I've got my markers uh, converted to arrangement markers, this means that I can go ahead and uh, basically select these markers uh, and, and move them around really easily. So if, for example, in my intro, I actually wanted to do a longer interlude, well, I can, I can do that. I can actually move the interlude from where it's at um, straight away to in between the intro and verse. I'll just zoom out a little bit. I'll go ahead and click on it and just drag it. And when I do that, you can see that whole section has changed. So now the interlude is right after the intro. Not necessarily what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and undo that. And uh, you can go edit and undo drag arrangement marker. Um, or you can say command Z. Um, and when we do command Z, that'll kind of bring us right back there. What I actually want to do is I want to duplicate the interlude. I want to do this one more time. And with arrangement markers, it's pretty easy. I can actually hold down the option button click and drag right next to it and you can see a second interlude has now been inserted right there no need to grab in all of those different tracks it's pretty great i can just go ahead and uh, option drag and that'll change the interlude if for example if you wanted to replace the section so say for example every verse that we did i actually wanted it to be a very high energy verse instead of like kind of starting with this low energy verse over here and if you're trying to replace a section uh, instead of option dragging, which will duplicate, you can hold down the command button and drag over the, the area you'd like to replace. And when you do that, that'll then replace uh, that particular section altogether. So now when we start the song, uh, here's what it'll sound like. Intro. Two, three, four. And obviously, if you didn't want uh, these drums to come in as hard as they do, uh, then you could do some other things. You can click on this option. You can delete uh, that particular region. And because regions inside of Logic are non-destructive, that means that we could actually go ahead and maybe we wanted to keep the drums from before. We can take our mouse to the bottom right-hand corner of the region and just extend that out. And that'll keep our drums uh, from the first verse. So, you know, uh, arrangement markers are really helpful if you're trying to rearrange or make a different um, kind of version of your song. In the next session, we'll show you how we can export tracks so you can use them in Prime, in Main Stage, even in Ableton. See you next time.